Okay, good evening. Welcome to Geometry Project number five, uh, which is about section 1.5 in Geometry Revisited, and this section is entitled the Steiner Lemmas Theorem. <coughs> now, this section is a, is a tremendous example of how beautiful math can be, and how sometimes very simple questions, or questions that seem very simple in math, can have incredibly complex answers. Now, I'm not going to follow uh, this chapter exactly. Instead, I'm going to give, I'm going to present three little theorems and um, prove two of them. The third one is the steiner lemmas theorem, which is a little more complicated. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think the proof is that instructive. It's complicated, and I think it's worth going through. But I think it's kind of a little different twist to see two. Three ideas that seem just the same, two of which are very easy to prove, then the third one turns out to be very difficult. Before I start, <laughs> I want to, I hope this looks okay. Uh, we just put new lights in our classroom, our little home classroom today, so it's probably going to take me a couple times to get the lights figured out. Okay, so, so here we go. Step one. Here's the question, or here's our little theorem we're going to prove. If a triangle has two equal medians, then that triangle, <coughs> then that triangle is isosceles. So here's my triangle ABC. I've drawn the median CY, and the median, if you remember, just means that it, it cuts the opposite side into two equal parts. So this little line segment is equal to this one. And I've drawn another median BX, and that median cuts this opposite side into two equal sides. And we don't know if these sides are the same or not. We're going to we're going to prove that they are, but we don't know at the start. But what we are assuming is these two medians CX. CY and BX are equal. Well, one thing we know about medians is the medians trisect each other, which means this segment is half as long as this segment, and this segment is half as long as this segment. But remember, we were assuming these medians are the same, and if they get trisected, then this side, which, what should I call it, this side M is going to equal this side M, and this side n is going to equal that side n. And now, notice that this angle and this angle are the same because they're opposite angles in an intersection. So, if you remember from your elementary geometry class, side angle side, side angle side, we have two triangles and we have side angle side are the same. Then we know those two triangles are congruent. And what that tells us is that this side here is equal to this side here, which is wonderful. And now, since this side is equal to this side, we already know that AX was equal to XC, and AY was equal to YB. So if this side is equal to this side, that means AX is equal to XB, and in fact, AB is equal to AC. So I hope I didn't go through that too quickly, but that tells us <coughs> our simple little theorem. If a triangle has two equal medians, then it is isosceles. Okay, on to the next little simple theorem. Okay, here we're back for the next little mini theorem. Oh, I forgot. This is number two. Didn't change that. If a triangle has two equal altitudes, then it is isosceles. So here's my little triangle, ABC, and I've drawn the altitude, which it goes from C to Y and hits side AB in, at a 90 degree angle, at a right angle. And I've drawn my other altitude, BX, that hits AC also at a right angle. And our assumption is, we just assume that BX equals CY. That's our assumption. If a triangle has two equal altitudes, then it is isosceles. So <clears throat> what I want you to notice about this uh, two triangles here is triangle, sorry, i got to cover it for a second, BYC and triangle BXC are right triangles. Okay? BYC and BXC are right triangles, and we know that they share the same hypotenuse. BC is the hypotenuse of BYC, and BC is the hypotenuse of BXC. We also know that CY equals BX. So we have two right triangles. We know that BX 
Oh, sorry, I've already written it. I was about to write bx equals cy, but I've already written it. So I have the triangle. Let me draw one here. One of the right angles at y, and my short side is b, and my long side ends in c. And I have another right triangle, this time with the right angle at x. Uh, harder to see here, but the short side is c, and the long side is bx. And I know that bx equals xc, and I know that bc equals bc. So here I have two right triangles, one side's the same, and the hypotenuse is the same, and that means the short side is the same by the Pythagorean theorem. So that tells us that CX equals BY. Well, that's very interesting, but it also tells us one other thing. It tells us that the angle CYB, C, uh, sorry, CBY, CBY, this angle, CBY, right there, equals the angle BCY. B, C, Y, this angle here. Ha ha! So now we just discovered that angle C in the big triangle, in the triangle A, B, C, equals angle B, which means that A, C and A, B are the same, which means the triangle A, B, C is isosceles. So again, I hope that wasn't too complicated to follow, but it shows our little theorem here. If a triangle has two equal altitudes, then it's isosceles. Not so hard to prove. On to the next one. Okay, here's our third little theorem. If a triangle has two equal angle bisectors, you probably even guessed where, what the next one was going to be, then it is isosceles. And so the first two, we looked at equal altitudes and equal medians. Those are easy to prove, so this should be easy to prove. And it's like, wow, wait a minute. How do you prove this? And it turns out that this is act this theorem actually has a name, the steiner lemmas theorem, which means it was probably pretty difficult to prove. In fact, the book says, Geometry Revisited says, this wasn't even proven until 1840. So you think about the history of geometry going all the way back to the Greeks. The Greeks seemed like they knew everything about geometry. So it literally took, you know, close to 2,000 years for someone to figure out how to prove this. The first two we did in like three minutes, so 2,000 years is a little longer. Much more difficult. The, the proofs in the book, it, a little hard to follow. I don't think there's too much to learn from it. But what I want you to learn from this is, as I said in the beginning, this shows how rich math and, and geometry can be. You have three statements that, that say almost exactly the same thing. And on the surface, they don't look that difficult at all. And two of them are easy to prove, and one is unbelievably difficult to prove. But they all turn out to be true. So this sort of reminds you of something like Fermat's last theorem, which is very easy to state, but turned out to be very difficult to prove, or the Goldbach conjecture, which is very easy to state, but turns out to be incredibly difficult to prove, or something like the continuum hypothesis, which is a little bit harder to state, but, but <laughs> even harder to prove. So I, I want you to, to understand that math can sometimes throw these little treasures at you, some easy, some very difficult, and, and that's what's really wonderful about studying math. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and, and I hope you get a chance to read section 1.5 of Geometry Revisited, because I think you'll really enjoy it, and you can work through this proof. It's only about a page long. And um, great, we'll be back tomorrow for uh, the next section. Thanks for watching.